Painful condylar positions can be visualized by use of the EAEF module. The operator and also the patient are able to receive an insight into which movements cause the patient to guide the lower jaw into a painful position. The aim is to exclude painful lower jaw positions by occlusal commands, for example, splints. Now we have clinically examined you and determined that you came with pain here in the joint on the left side. We have done many tests on you, around 20, and also determined that some particular tests were painful. A short while ago I have move your lower jaw to the left, done that, and then pressed here. And when I pressed there, it was always painful for you, exactly like the pain which you came to us with. That means we now know that you are not imagining this pain, which could well have been possible that you were feeling pain there. There could be three reasons for this, that there was localized pain here, or it was transmitted there, or it came from perhaps there and then projected here, a transmitted pain, or you were imagining the pain. Then we carried out an examination, and during the examination, we determined that when you moved your jaw so, or if we pressed here, we could reproduce the pain. We have here a localized pain. It is not transmitted and it is not imagined. It is a factual somatic pain. That was the first part of the examination. And now we come to the second part. In this second part, we want to know, and we now know that you do have pain, now we want to know what is causing it. We only know that it's there. It's like finding a broken window somewhere. That's a fact, we have found it there, and now we wish to know who has thrown it there. And that we can do with this tool here. EAEF. This is the electronic analysis of ethnological factors. We now have to find out what is causing this pain. It could be the way you bite. Just biting your teeth together we call static occlusion. Or biting with movement, which we call dynamic occlusion. Or it could be caused by grinding your teeth together. Or other factors, such as swallowing patterns. We know that you have pain and we want to find out if this is being caused by your static occlusion or the dynamic occlusion or by grinding your teeth. We will do this by an electronic analysis. First of all, this bow is positioned on the teeth in the lower jaw. Don't be afraid. Is that okay? Good. Now you can help me a little. Please hold this on this side. Very good. If it's pressing or pinching, please let me know. Now, everything okay? Good. We will fix this here so that nothing moves during the registration. It's not too tight, is it? Okay, good. So now we'll start the program. First of all, we will record how your upper jaw is positioned in your skull. Please open your mouth a little. Thanks very much. I'll now adjust this spoon to your upper teeth. I'll hold this firmly on both sides. You don't need to do anything, just hold still. Very good. Bite down please. Good, very good. OK, now open your mouth wide and close, making sure the teeth do not make contact. 
Do this five or six times. Open and close without tooth contact. Open wide and close with no tooth contact. Open and close, no tooth contact. Open and close, no tooth contact. Good. Now I'll not make the movements for you, but just guide your chin a little or observe what you are doing. Now please open your mouth one millimeter and close again one millimeter. Again open one millimeter and close. Open and close. Open and close. Open and close. Close a little further. Open again and close. Open and close. Close quite slowly until the first minimal tooth contact and then stop immediately. Whenever contact is made, stop immediately. Remain so and don't do anything. Open slightly once more. Slowly close until the first minimal contact then stop immediately and do nothing. Once again, open and close slightly until the first minimal contact. Remain so and do nothing. Everything okay? We have now measured three positions. From these positions, the computer will now calculate an average and that will be the center of our target. Now that we know where the reference position is, we can carry out our measurements. First of all, we will repeat one of the tests from the clinical examination where your complaint first appeared. So, move your lower jaw again a little to the left. Good, stop. I will now continue the movement by pressing to the rear. As soon as you feel any pain, simply raise your left hand. OK, when it hurts, raise the left hand, raise the left hand. That was the site of the pain, on the left side. You can see that we have marked it here. There, where the red crosses are. That is your condyle when you have your pain. So we now know where the condyle is when the pain appears. We can do the same for the other side. But we don't need to do that, we can skip that here, because there was nothing. Now, bite down as you would normally do, just as your bite is. Hold it there. Do not move. Now you can see here, that is the last black cross. Your condyle is there when you have pain. There is your condyle when you use your teeth. Therefore, your teeth, your static occlusion does not lead there. That means your bite, even if it is not normal, your bite is certainly a deviation from the position. Although your bite is not ideal, it is not responsible for your pain. Good. Again to the middle. Now, please move your lower jaw to the right along the canine teeth. Close along the teeth, further, 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 a little more, back again. OK, and once again push to the right. Stop, hold and do nothing. Good, that was great. You can see your condyle is there at the front, but you have the pain there at the back. In other words, this movement here is not the cause of your pain there. Then please move your lower jaw over to the left. Good. Hold it there. Do nothing. Good. Then, next, move the lower jaw again to the right. Please. Now we are looking for the places where you go to grind your teeth. either at night, or when driving, or sitting at the computer. Hold still. OK. And now once again go to the other side. Now I must come briefly to the other side. That's good. Further, 
stop and to the back further good now to the left and a little over here good but don't protrude you're cheating move slowly over to the middle and the left yes that's good further further stop that's fine remain so OK, close please. Try to move the upper jaw forwards and the lower jaw to the back. Good, perfect. And now suck in your cheeks just like when you are concentrating on the computer. Yes, once again and hold it so. OK, wonderful. Then we are through with the registration. Now I can show you where the most interesting movements were. Red indicates where your pain is. If you go over to the side, you will see circled in yellow the position of your condyle. If we start from the first result, when you were biting down, all other findings show that the yellow is further forward than the red. When you move to the right, the yellow is some distance away from the red. That is not too significant. When you move to the left, it was also not so close. When you grind your teeth to the right, it is also far away from your pain problem. But when you grind to the left, it is close to your pain problem as it is when you grind to the rear. What have we determined with the electronic analysis? Etiological causative factors. We have established that you have pain there. We have plotted the location of the pain. We have recorded a variety of possible causes for this pain. We have determined that only gnashing to the rear and to the left of the condyle causes the pressure which is responsible for your pain. That means you don't need a dentist to adjust your static bite or the dynamic occlusion. But you possibly need a splint. And this splint must be so constructed in the laboratory that when you grind your teeth, your condyle no longer goes outwards and to the rear, but somewhat further forwards. You will continue to grind your teeth for the emotional processing of stress. The analysis has shown this, and now we have to transfer this information into the correct splint. So we press here to enter the splint menu in order to make a drawing for the production of a splint by means of auxiliary equipment. This is so constructed that there will be no pressure causing pain when you move your condyle. Do you understand the principle? Good then please look straight ahead. Jaw forward as far as you can and back. And forward as far as you can, back. And forward as far as you can, back. Now move your jaw once more to the left. When you do that, you always go a little to the rear. We don't want that. I now want you to practice a new pattern of movement. You should not move here to the side where my finger is, but gnash on my finger instead. That's good so. Once again, gnash on my finger. back now the same thing once again gnash on my finger and back super now move here over to the right great and back move to the right and back Move 
move to the right and back. 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 We have now recorded your movement, but not your normal movement, where you move the condyle to the rear. Instead, we have recorded the movement where the condyle comes slightly out of the articular head, so that your pain there is relieved. For this movement, we calculate a specific angle for the adjustment of the auxiliary equipment, and thereby we can produce your splint. With this splint, you can grind your teeth as much as you like but no longer to the rear in the painful region, but instead to the front, where you will feel no pain. So, that's all for now. I'll dismantle this now. With the help of the settings for the calculator, the operator can have a dynamic splint produced in the dental laboratory. Time-consuming production of the splint at the dental chair is avoided.